Hello and welcome. This is Reverend Folklore from Abandoned Somniac Folklore. And today we're going to be taking a look at the latest release from Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, Ghost Teen. I wasn't expecting to make this video until tomorrow, since it was due out on the 4th. But it turns out that today is basically tomorrow in Australia, where Nick Cave is from. So this album will come out in two hours instead of sometime when the sun actually comes up next here. I'm really curious about this album. There is 2012's Push the Sky Away, which had some interesting songs, um, took a really different musical direction, it had good songs like We Know Who You Are and Mermaids and Jubilee Street, but some of the other songs felt a little bit uh, maybe flat or pretentious, but still had some great moments. And then Skeleton Tree came out when Nick was initially dealing with the death of his son, and that album kind of had similar musical qualities to it, but felt like it had a lot of... it had more meaning to it. Um, it felt a little bit broken in the melodies. It felt as though it could fall apart. It felt like pure emotion, which is remarkable. And I'm really curious to see what they do with this album. Um, just look, all I have to go on so far with this album is the art that they've released. And the art has this kind of Thomas Kincaid, kitschy look to it. And I'm really curious to see what they do. Is a, just looking at this, it really seems to be drawing on some spiritual themes or maybe some fantastic themes. It has, what I notice right away, it ha is it has this lion that is laying down next to a lamb. And the lamb seems to be the central focal point of the art and be slightly illuminated, just standing among all these different animals. And is it some kind of a reference to a heavenscape or something to that effect? And I think it very well could be. Uh, Nick Cave has frequently had a lot of spiritual references in his albums, but it's always been a little bit messy and very honest. Um, at times he's been a confessing Christian, other times he just doesn't know if he can get with that kind of organization. My wife has theorized that this album may actually have some references to Joel Olstein and not just be Ghost Teen, but maybe that might be some kind of reference. And this album may have some themes about kishy Christianity or what we've come to expect from spirituality in this day and age. So we'll see how much of that holds true. This will just be a first reaction review. I'm just going to listen to it once. I'm going to take some notes and We'll just see how it goes. So stick around and uh, here we go. Well, <laughs> well, that was something. Um, <clears throat> I just finished watching and listening to the premiere of this album, um, live streaming on YouTube. And uh, leading up to it is interesting uh, being there while people are watching it live and commenting on it. I got a plate of cheese and crackers out, um, I got a small glass of wine and a glass of water out, and just sat there with my headphones on. Right before the video went live, the uh, live chat stuff was kind of getting overwhelming, you couldn't really read it anyway, and it was just getting distracting, so I minus that out, and uh, just turned the lights down. The album was split into two parts. One part about children, one part about parents, and one part a transient spirit that connects them. Um, at least that's what we're told in the intro of the premiere before the music actually started. The first song starts off with just these uh, really atmospheric synthesizers and then Nick's voice comes in on it. He's talking about Elvis and birds and, and this chorus comes in that repeats and I love you and peace will come in time, time will come for us and just kind of sets things up with that. The next song is kind of where things started actually uh, 
hitting me a bit emotionally. I teared up part way into it. Um, the song's a song about longing for wonder and longing for a world beyond just the apparent world. There's a line that goes, uh, the world is plain to see, but that doesn't mean we can't believe. Believe in wonder, believe, that, believe in the Lord, believe you can be reunited with loved ones you've lost one day. The song really is about how <clears throat> it's a song about how the world can be a cruel and really empty place, but that doesn't mean you can't have faith and you you can't believe in something better than that. The same themes continue on to the next song and really throughout the whole album, but uh, the next song has a line, a Jesus freak said that you are returning. A little bit of faith can go a long way. I'm waiting for you to return. And that return that Nick is talking about, he may be talking about waiting or longing for the return of Christ, or waiting or longing for the return of his son, but I think it might be a little bit of both. Later he talks about a spiral of children climbing their way to the sun. The uh, song also references the, the crucifixion. Uh, this may be simply about, may simply be about children who've passed before their parents, um, but it seems it may have little bits of a, uh, in scripture where Jesus says, let the chil little children come to me and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And maybe in a way we're all those children in the end. So again, this may be Nick saying one thing or maybe another thing, but I kind of suspect it's a little bit of both. Later we seem to get a little bit of a snapshot of a funeral from the perspective of the departed. Uh, the line in it is, I am beside you, look for me. I think they have gathered here for me. I think for singing to be free. Um, suggesting that the dead aren't really completely gone, they're just in another part of reality and maybe that reality isn't too far removed from reality as as we know it. And that kind of sums up the general themes on the first half of the album. Then there was a minute and a half intermission between the two parts in the stream and things got going again. The second part of the album had a really long synth and piano intro of just a little bit of vocals just kind of wafting around in the mix and Nick's voice comes in and the song builds up bigger than anything we've heard so far. And there's these drums and this bass comes in and it's just swelling up with the vocals and the line, uh, the ghost teen dancing in my hand. Then later talking about a child sailing to the moon and being left behind. Then there's a line there's nothing wrong with loving something you can't hold in your hand. Ghost Teen is a song that seems to be about letting go and but also not being afraid to love even though there's a chance that you may lose that person you love or that you may hurt at some point because of that love and really just maybe making the best and enjoying every moment that you get because that's what you get for now. The next piece is a little more of a spoken word style piece of opening line about Jesus and his mother's arms. There are several references to Jesus and his mother on the first half as well, but on this half it seems to drive home a little more that Mary was one who knew what it was like to lose a child, and maybe Nick and his wife finding a little bit of kinship in that story with Mary losing a child. It also compares our existence on earth to fireflies dancing dimly in the dark. You know, you only have so long, you only have so much light that you can shine, but maybe there's something else. The last song froze up a couple times for me in the stream. Maybe the server was getting overwhelmed with so many people watching it, but I caught, caught a good chunk of it. 
It has uh, this lightly pulsating, almost like a heartbeat of a bass on it, with some lilting vocals and a, a line, I'm just waiting for my time to come, I'm waiting for peace to come. The song may be referencing uh, Nick going on tour to kind of help process grief and doing something he's familiar and comfortable with and leaving his wife at home to deal with it the morning in her own way. Later at the end of the song it kind of has this story, um, it has the story of uh, Kisa and the Buddha and Buddha tells her to not cry over the death of her child, but go collect mustard seeds from every house in a village, any house where no one has died. And so she goes to all these different houses in the village, but finds that there's nowhere, there's no house that hasn't experienced death. And so she ultimately winds up, you know, with a dead child and has to bury her child in the forest. A little bit of a bleak end to the album, other than the line, I'm waiting to find peace of mind. So that's kind of where it ends. Kind of a random ending to the album, but there it is. This album is very much a direct follow-up to Skeleton Tree, but it feels a little less broken and maybe a little less emotionally raw. Maybe a little less like active grieving and more about processing after that point. Um, I think it maybe even deals more directly with the death of his son. I think this album leans a little more into the hope of a larger reality. There's this reoccurring idea throughout the entire album of the hope of reunification one day. There's a lot of biblical imagery and references to Christ on nearly every song on this album and the idea of this other life where there's still wonder and there's still magic and this world that lies just beyond our world that we can't always see or touch but just kind of the hope that it's still there. This album is very moody and very dreamy. It has a lot of synths on it. Um, it has piano, organs, and occasional percussion and strings. There's also a whole lot of backing vocals on this record. In fact, I think a lot more backing vocals than we've heard on any previous Nick Cave and Bad Seeds album. Also, for sure, this is the most synth-heavy album from the Bad Seeds. So, it really kind of takes the sound that we got on Push the Sky Away and Skeleton Tree, but kind of even goes a little bit further um, a certain direction than those ones did. I'd say this is a beautiful, really beautiful album overall. I didn't really have any particular, like, home run standout songs on it. It just felt like every song was just part of a larger whole. It's an album about longing and hope, hope in a life beyond this life. It's emotionally heavy, but a little more hopeful than the previous album. And I don't know if it would make sense to just pull one song off and make it a single. Maybe it would, but it seems like kind of a shame to separate any of these songs from the context of the album. The first half of the album is a series of shorter songs that feel like they tell one story. And the second part continues that story with these longer songs that tell the same story from maybe a little bit different perspective. The second part has longer songs and feels a little more dynamic. Um, it builds up in different places into these really big parts and branches off into different directions. Anyway, that's my first impression of the album. I think this may wind up proving to be one of my personal favorite Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds albums. Um, I really love the religious imagery in this album and how the imagery doesn't seem like it's just there for dressing but it actually feels like it means something and has a relevance and importance to the narrative of this album. I definitely recommend this album as a dedicated listen. I would listen to at least the first whole part of the album as a whole 
And then the second part of the album as a whole, um, breaking it up into smaller chunks. I don't know if that makes that much sense to me, but that's just kind of my first impression of it. That's how I listen to it. So, yeah, I guess this album kind of is a little bit of a, a heavenscape in its own way, just kind of hoping for that world beyond. There we have it. Seems like the third part in a trilogy, but man, I, I'm really impressed that it managed to build up to something like this. So, Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. If you, if you liked this video, I'd love it if you would subscribe or uh, feel free to comment or give a like or dislike to this album if you didn't like it because you have that freedom. Um, also, I have some links down below uh, where you can check out this album. I also have some links down there to, to my band and my musical project if you'd like to see what else I do. But uh, thank you very much for joining me today, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks.